This is the first video in a series of video during which we will be going through the analysis of a gamma ray burst using the Fermi telescope data. First things first, the Fermi telescope was launched in 2008. There are two instruments on the Fermi telescope, the gamma ray burst monitor or the GBM and the large area telescope or the LAD instrument. The GBM instrument houses 12 sodium iodide detectors or the NAI detectors and two bismuth germinate detectors or the BGO detectors. The LAT on the other hand works on the principles of pair production. The incident photons interact with the tungsten material inside the detector and then eventually gets deposited into a calorimeter. The readings are then picked up by the data acquisition system and then relayed to the ground where they are processed further. Once the information has reached the earth, this information is then quickly relayed to the GCN circular archives where everyone is notified of the findings be it from the Fermi telescope or the SWIFT telescope or any other telescope that has detected some gamma ray burst or X-ray flare or anything else. This is then followed up by several other telescopes um, in different wavelengths. Once the pre-analysis is done, um, the data is stored in archives and is available for the public to download and reprocess the data. The GRB that we will be working with throughout the series is the GRB 190114C, the third GRB that was detected by the Fermi telescope on the 14th of January 2019. In order to proceed with the analysis for the GR for this particular GRB. We will be going through several steps. The first one would be to determine the right ascension and declination for the GRB from the archives, the GCN archives. The next one will be to download the GBM data from the GBM archives. It will only require the GBM trigger name because each trigger name is unique for each GRB detected. Then we will go through the LAD archives to download the LAD data. It will require us to give it the right ascension, the energy range, the type of uh, data we need. Then we will go through the downloading process of the data in GTBurst as well. This is done for two reasons. First one is to make a sky XML file which will be used in later analysis. And the other one is to determine the angular separation from the source to each GPM detector. Also, the GPM data will contain a lookup file which will be used to determine the relative strengths of the detectors, but which will help us to determine the appropriate detectors for the analysis. The first thing that we will do is to correct the GPM data for the localization errors in the GPM. We will be using the GPM ISP Gen tool for this particular process. It will generate the response and response to files based on whatever right ascension and declination and the time interval we will provide. Why this step is necessary is because the GBM has localization errors. It cannot localize as precisely as the LAD can. And so if we are dealing with the data of same GRB but with different right ascensions and declination, that will be a trouble because the data will just not sit correctly. Once we have corrected the GPM data, we will then put it through the RMFIT software in which we will confine the data on both energy and time basis and then we will load the LAD data and perform the analysis. That's it for the introductory video. Uh, we will now move on towards the analysis. Thank you very much for watching.